Two weeks ago, Palamore completed a hard grind to level 70 on a Hunter, a class that he has never played before in PvP. Then, with the bare minimum gear, he decided to queue Solo Shuffle, where everything went completely wrong. His pet died multiple times and he didn't even know his keybind to res it, and some games he even attacked the completely wrong target. As far as his damage goes, <clears throat> well, that wasn't too hot either. But despite all of this, he managed to go 5-1 in his first ever solo shuffle. Beginner's luck at low MMR, right? Well, no, because in his very next lobby, he went 4-2, and, and after that, he went 5-1. By the end of the night, he was already rival level MMR, and within a week, he was already 2700. So, how can someone who's never played a class before in their life go from dinging level 70 to playing at rival ratings in under a few hours, and then top 100 in just a few days? Of course, Palamore is one of the best players in the world, but you just saw how bad things actually went. In fact, if you look closely at his grind, there was one thing he was doing that completely carried him along the way. So today, we will explain how anyone, regardless of the class you play, can overcome inexperience, bad gear, and low damage with some easy gameplay adjustments. Alright, so what was Palamore doing? Ironically, it's one of the oldest discoveries ever in PvP. In fact, legendary players like Wreckful figured this out way before it became mainstream in the Rank 1 community. The reason Palamore was winning had everything to do with how and when he chained his crowd control on the enemy healer. Not only was he CCing on cooldown every DR, but more importantly, he was getting crowd control super early, which would sometimes force trinkets within the first 20 seconds of the game. Aside from getting CC early and off every DR, Palamore was making sure that there wasn't a single gap in his crowd control, something which is important in a fast-paced meta, and even when healers thought they would leave CC, he always found some way to extend it, which he does here with a knock into silence, which allowed him to force pain suppression and life swap by himself. In the first 25 seconds of this game at 2200. Now, we know what you're thinking. Palamore is a hunter. Of course he can CC chain the healer. It's easy for him. Well, obviously, but if that's your mentality, we will be the first to tell you that Solo Shuffle is not a single player game. Even if you feel like your class has limited CC options, chances are someone in your lobby does have longer crowd control that you can extend with your own CC. Don't believe us? As a demon hunter, you could imprison, fell eruption, or sigil of misery. Play druid? You got options too, obviously, like cyclone and bash. Are you an evoker? Sleepwalk or even the simple act of interrupting the enemy healer are two ways you can help out. In fact, the majority of classes in WoW have some form of follow-up that can be chained together with their team. This includes healers. Of course, you won't have many moments to safely push in and crowd control, but when the moment is right, a perfectly sequenced CC chain is enormously helpful. Even DKs, paladins, and warriors who probably have the least CC options in the game are still able to contribute to kills with some form of crowd control. If you are a class with lots of control, you need to capitalize off of your ability to chain CC by yourself without leaving any gaps. Here for instance, our Boomkin thinks all they need to do is root beam the healer, but without any follow-up CC, the Shaman isn't put that far behind. If our Druid would have put extra effort to chain a War Stomp clone, it might have been possible to force more than just Earth and Wall Totem, especially since Incarnation is active. Now, let's compare that to when Vinruki recently was learning Boomkin. Instead of doing nothing off of Root Beam, he would make sure to extend his own CC chains as often as possible, to put extra pressure on the enemy healer. The reason why chaining CC early and not leaving gaps is so important is because crowd control is disproportionately effective in Solo Shuffle. The obvious reason is that it forces trinkets and other major CDs from enemy healers, which of course opens up win conditions later on when your opponents have nothing left to escape a longer CC chain. The less obvious reason is the fact that aggressively CCing the enemy healer healer is also good defensively. If you can manage to string together a long CC chain, it gives your team valuable counter pressure, which forces enemy players back and alleviates the stress your own healer has to deal with. So with a focus on CCing the enemy healer, you get a 2 and one And the best part of crowd control is that it doesn't care that you are undergeared or have little experience. Of course, your CC feels stronger when you can do more damage, but every second the enemy healer spends in crowd control puts them behind further on GCDs. This mentality works even better if your partner in solo shuffle is one of the uber damage gods of the bracket. If you're in a lobby with a demon hunter or a destro warlock, you know that they can win the game on their own with only a tiny bit of help. So even if your damage is low, you are still able to contribute by putting the enemy healer behind with your own CC. This is especially true against healers like Resto Druids. Unless they have overgrowth ready, then taking them out of the game for 10 seconds can put them massively behind, since it means that they have to manually reapply every hot in order to ramp their healing. And remember, healers suck! We don't mean their skill sucks, but instead, healing just flat out sucks right now, and getting even worse when dampening starts stacking. 
But whether you're a Vinruki playing a Boomkin or Warlock for the first time, or Palamore playing a Hunter, you can overcome inexperience or lack of gear by being more aggressive with your CC, especially early on into the game. This makes even more sense when you consider Palamore mains a rogue. We all know that rogues are annoying because they never let anyone on your team play the game, but if you can adopt the mentality of a sub-rogue and constantly pester the healer with gapless crowd control, you would be surprised at how effective this can be. Sub-rogues are one of the best specs at doing this, and of course, chaining CC will be harder if you don't play one of Blizzard's favorite classes. But even if you still don't believe in the power of CC, we will show you what else you can do to help your team win. Of course, one of these things is damage. If you can do more burst damage in your CC windows, it makes your crowd control even stronger. This is a problem when you consider damage as one of the key separation points between rating brackets, with higher rated players doing 20% more DPS on average across every spec. Fortunately, our class courses at skillcap.com are designed with all this in mind. Not only do we teach you how to deal rank 1 level damage, but we also have crowd control courses for every class that show you step by step how and when to land CC. When you combine all this with our expanding library of arena commentaries, it's no wonder that Skillcap members are able to quickly gain rating. In fact, we actually offer a rating gain guarantee that promises you will climb at least 400 rating while actively using our website. So if you want to see real results, be sure to check out Skillcap.com after this video. So what if you still don't believe in the power of crowd control and you think there is no way you can add to CC chains? What can you do? This might mean you're playing one of the classes we mentioned before, maybe a DK, warrior, or ret paladin. We will admit your CC options aren't comparable to a mage, hunter, or rogue. Regardless, there is still one thing you should do no matter what class you play, and this applies to everyone. If you absolutely do not want to contribute to crowd control, you should then focus on synchronizing your burst with your teammate's CC. Again, you have to think of the game like a sub-rogue. What do they do? Well, they CC your healer and try to one-shot you. These are the two components of offensive gameplay, CC and burst, and at the very least, you need to contribute to one of these. This is something we've said in the past, CC and damage are always stronger when used together, so if you can't CC, you need to make sure your damage happens in very specific windows. If you're playing with a mage, this means lining up your damage with their polymorph on the enemy healer. Once the CC is secured, hopefully someone on your team has a stun for the kill target, and then using the combined lockdown, you have the perfect window to start bursting. Not only should you do this, but also, hunters, do they just land a freezing trap? Then you are now on a timer to get as much value of their CC, and this means maximizing damage. Again though, this applies to playing with virtually any other class. In normal 3v3, you would obviously communicate burst windows to your teammates, but in solo shuffle, your communication is limited to the signals your partners give you. And when your partner CCs the healer, that means they are communicating to you that it is time to burst, and bursting together is always better than desyncing your damage. Remember, healing is hard. In fact, it is so difficult these days that most healers will play with spaceship UIs that scream at them whenever a CD is popped, and if this happens when they are CC'd, they are more likely to burn a trinket in order to deal with the thousands of weak auras on their screen. Once this happens, you are closer to your true win condition. So just to recap at this point, one of the best things you can do is keep the enemy healer locked down for as long as you can by making sure there are no gaps in your CC. No matter what, once a CC chain gets started, that means it is time to synchronize your burst. If you are under geared or lack experience on a new class, these are the two most important things you need to be doing if you want to overcome low damage. Okay, but what if you're still 100% convinced that chaining CC doesn't matter at all? Or what if you absolutely can't manage to CC at all? Well, if you have no way of CCing the healer, then sometimes it's good to start pressuring them. No, we're not joking. In very specific situations, healers can make fantastic targets even if they're playing in the open. Hopefully by now you've seen our solo shuffle targeting guide, which tells you which healers are the easiest to kill. Regardless though, you have to remember the golden rule that we've already repeated twice now. It's that healing sucks, and this includes healing multiple targets. So if you have no possible way of CCing the healer, you can indirectly crowd control them by just attacking them and drawing their attention away from their teammates. This works best if you're playing a melee DPS, since you generally don't have many CC options. Instead, you have two and a half things, a stun, cleave damage, and a mortal strike effect. <clears throat> Ignore that third part if you're an Enhancement Shaman or Red Paladin. Anyway, even if you don't have any ways at chaining CC, your pressure on the enemy healer matters more than you think. It means that they now have to deal with someone in their face spamming them with damage and threatening them with kicks. Palamore had to do this a few times as well. Sometimes his partners would break his traps by sitting on the healer, but instead of letting them get away with it, he would simply blast them with damage to multiply the pressure. Even at higher ratings, healers can choke in this exact same situation. This is because most healers never assume they will be the kill target, and in some cases, they will be pushed in with their team, which gives you a perfect opportunity to chop them down while you cleave their team. Before we wrap things up, Palamore's climb relied on aggressively CCing the enemy healer, and he made sure to get crowd control early while making sure not to leave any gaps. 
This obviously works best if you are a class with spammable CC and multiple DRs to work with. Having these tools give you multiple ways to harass enemy healers. But even if you don't have spammable CC, you can still contribute to locking down the enemy healer. Even if your damage is low, you can compensate by preventing any healing for as long as possible. But we want to hear from you. What are your biggest pain points in Solo Shuffle? Let us know and we will try to address them in future videos. And before you go, we wanted to remind you that SkillCab.com is the only place that guarantees you will gain at least 400 rating while using our guides. So if you want to learn the fundamentals of CC and damage, be sure to visit the links in the video description. But that wraps it up for this one. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.